We all know that today, in order to provide some monitoring and security, we need to collect many, many logs. And regardless of whether they are on-prem, on-cloud, or a combination of both, but, you know, typical things are Active Directory, IPSs, firewalls, and many, many others, right? And some of them, like these ones, have a high level of relevance uh, from the security standpoint, but others, like for example SharePoint and many other sources, uh, they really have, from the security standpoint, very low security relevance. So it, they might be interesting to complement an investigation, but you wouldn't call them things that uh, would be very related to security. Now, in terms of the tools that we use today to monitor those logs, like QReader, Business IEM for automatic correlation. In some organizations, particularly large organizations, they may also have other tools like Splunk for as a log aggregator and doing searches with it. And also now that in the cloud we have things like AWS CloudWatch and CloudTrail that do kind of a similar thing like SIEM does, but uh, only in stuff that is in the cloud. The equivalent in Azure is Sentinel. But we also have other tools that receive information and, and work in this scheme like uh, Carbon Black or FireEye or very many other endpoint technologies that they produce their own logs and work in, in with different levels of integration with these tools, things like big fix for patching, uh, vulnerability information, and very importantly, threat intelligence sources. Not just one, but several. Virus Total, X Force, and some specific for different type of industries, etc. And to keep this list short, we also have security orchestration and response technologies like resilient and where most people are now these days spending their time because ultimately what you want to do is to close any security incident that shows up so with all these things the ideal approach will be to send the logs into for example my curator send them to splunk send them to or you know to aws if i have some intelligence in there and or send stuff from aws into splunk and curator same thing with with azure uh, etc right and, and in terms of the threat intelligence data well i want to feed that the threat intelligence data into my curator into my splunk in aws uh, so and then when you perform a SOAR investigation and you want to investigate some of those IOCs, you need to connect to the different thread intels or make queries into any one of these systems. So you begin to understand that, that this is difficult for two reasons. Number one is cost. I mean, in Curator, you need to pay for events per second. In Splunk, you need to pay for storage. In, in this cloud environment, you have aggression or data outgoing uh, or, uh, charges so cost is really a big issue and, and it's something as, as I get more and more log sources and more and more people generating more more logs on every one of the sources then this cost can get uh, out of hand but also the integration among them is really building open yeah the REST API yeah it's a but it's every API is proprietary so you need to understand the schema how you're going to be collecting the the data so if i want to talk between QReader and big fix that's one api that would only serve you for that so there's not a lot of uh, reuse or there's no like a, a unique standard in into those so to address those challenges especially the one on the actual cost mainly because the other problem of proprietary integration is not solved by this technology, what the market or some people has actually gone through is into an, a scheme in which 
data lakes is the name of the approach in, in with technologies so you probably have heard of that elk elastic searches and the idea is well I'm going to be sending all the logs into this big data lake I move all that data in here and then I will decide which data is in here which data is in there uh, and there and so on and so forth and particularly on the cloud and and, and what people has been realizing is that the way that you send the data the formats are completely different from one to the next you need to get specialized in using new tools and more like business intelligence type of tools uh, this brings a lot of complexity into already a complex job like, like like the one of doing security and of course this drives some hidden cost that probably were not properly anticipated so this is transforming the security job into a moving data around job and the questions are is there a better way can we get out of the can we leave the data where it is instead of moving data around which adds very little value and in the end doesn't save much money can I stop also investing into proprietary connections between different things can, can, can I use some standard technology that can help me use one language to talk to them all that I'm going to be finishing in this whiteboard and I will be demonstrating it in subsequent videos is what IBM calls data in place. The idea is to with the log sources send those logs to only one location okay probably in the case of that we are talking about most likely your SIM your curator for finding incident for correlating things among with flows and all these other sources to detect that an incident has happened but when when is whenever possible just leave the data what is being generated stop moving them around now here is that the analyst will be spending most of his time of her time handling the actual case but in order to do that and basically as you may imagine this technology will have resilient as the point and I say will have because what it has right now is a subset of the actual full resilient product with idea is to to have all the functionality in there so you're going to be managing your cases but in order to do that you will need to consult with threat intelligence sources and in a very nice way and I'm going to actually show you that at the moment of this recording this technology that I'm going to be showing in this video series only has the X-Force but the idea is to bring the virus total, the, the cloud strike, the, 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 the you know all the of the relevant threat intelligence sources into the picture but with that analyst in order to do its job he or she will have to perform searches and for that the component in this tool is called data explorer it's kind of a federated search that is going to be able to go into all these systems and gather the actual data so for example, let's say that uh, I start, and I will be demoing this later, uh, looking at a thread intel feed. Let's say that I'm investigating APT41. And that gives me a lot of uh, very nice information about it, but also produce a bunch of IOCs. Well, I may want to actually perform a search on those IOCs and see whether those IOCs are present in my different system for example if 
For this APT41, go ahead and look inside QReader, Splunk, and AWS, and tell me whether those IOCs are present and show me, you know, details of their presence in any one of those systems. In order for this tool to be able to do that, to talk to all these disparate type of systems, um, this tool, by the way, only talks in stick language. Actually, it's a stick version 2, uh, which is a standard. Is a common way of really saying what an IP is, what a URL is, and what type of you know uh, stuff I'm actually looking for. But what happened is that, you know, this is a stick, but uh, does Curator natively, when I'm making a search, does it talk sticks? No. Curator talks AQL. And Splunk has uh, his API. It doesn't talk stick natively either. And AWS has also an API that you can, you know, talk to it with, but not stick. Now, what this component has is several connectors. So when I'm doing this search, and I just specify via stick what I'm searching for, I'm saying go and fetch it from Curator, Splunk, and AWS, then this connector will translate from stick to AQL and vice versa when the data comes from Curator uh, into back to stick and same with Splunk and, and all the other multiple components, and there are very many of them. Uh, today and we suspected that more will be actually coming but what IBM has done in here is that it has pulled a technology and, and it's not alone on this and I'm going to talk some more about it I'm actually going to go to the website to show you into something called a technology called stick shifter so let me actually go into the Open Cybersecurity Alliance uh, organization's website. And this is their their site. You can go into the URL and see for yourself. Uh, get more details on it. And here we can see some of the actual members of this uh, particular group, and that's their presentation they did in 2020. Uh, so, what IBM has tried has tried to do here is uh, let's actually pull together and you stick as the common language for having all these tools to interconnect with one another instead of going with proprietary ways of doing it via API this or API that. You can see some basic, you know, conversation, uh, information about the open shifter and, you know. Now, the name of this technology is called Cloud Pack for Security, abbreviated CP4S. And you're going to be surprised of how much has been already accomplished and put into this type of technology that I think that is pretty unique in the market. Uh, because it really makes us stop going into the business of moving data around. So that's what they call it, data in place. And allows that analyst to have a very good looking UI, you actually see it in, in the subsequent videos, that allows them to manage those cases because when one thing that I forgot to actually mention is that when you are, you know, detecting an incident or, you know, whatever it is that you are doing whenever of these searches, a case is automatically open for you. So you don't have to actually do that and you progress it and you move it through that. This is version one of that technology, but I think you will like what you will see in the subsequent videos when I demo that.